This is the Home Tech Podcast show number 49, recorded on October 27th, 2011. I am your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in Bellevue, Nebraska, and posted each week with the world-class show notes over at TheAverageGuy.tv. You can contact the show, podcast at TheAverageGuy.tv, or track me down on Twitter. Just find me at Jay Collison, although I'm considering changing that to at the average guy. I don't know why I use my name there. Nobody else does. You can find us on Facebook and now uh, the new and improved iTunes um, feed that is out there. I finally got iTunes to drop the old Podomatic feed and now the new feed burner feed is out there. And you can actually, if you search for the average guy podcast uh, in iTunes, you'll find our brand new feed out there. If you uh, need to change over to that because Podomatic, we don't post Podomatic anymore. Um, head out there. You can also grab all the links you'll ever need um, for the podcast to run on your iPhone, iPad, iPod, as well as Android uh, phones or tablets. Just head over to the uh, theaverageguy.tv, look in the right-hand column, and you can grab them all right there. If you've been a listener to the show, we were just talking a few minutes uh, off show about uh, how many we've done here, and this is the 49th show. If you've been listening for a while and uh, you like what we do here, I know I'd get emails from you guys that uh, tell me how much you like listening to the podcast, but it would be really helpful if you told us on iTunes now that we have a single feed and I wiped out the other one. And so if you go back out there, let us know on iTunes. That actually boosts our ranking a little bit and allows us to be closer to the top in search. So if you got a minute, head out to iTunes, find our feed, just search for The Average Guy and uh, give us a comment. Well, tonight it's been interesting to get the guys in. We had Mike Howard out earlier in the pre-show. He'll show up at the end of the show magically somehow in, in editing um, as he talks about his Windows home server uh, problems that he's been having and some new builds uh, that he's been doing. But tonight with me, of course, is the always steady Eddie, Andrew Morris, Melbourne, Australia. Andrew, how are you doing? Pretty good, thanks, Jim. Got a few uh, stability issues with the internet connection today, but uh, aside from that, it's a cracking day in Melbourne. We're currently sitting on about 22, 23 degrees Celsius. and Spring is on its way for you, right? I mean, you guys yeah. are in full, full effect? Yep, yep, full effect and looking forward to a long weekend. So next Tuesday's uh, Melbourne Cup Day, which is what the, the horse race they, they call the race that stops the nation and half the world and um, Monday I'm taking off as a uh, as a free as a free annual leave day that um, EDS used to call the global diversity day nice so I'm being globally diverse on Monday and sleeping in <laughs> nice <laughs> always always good to have a long weekend and uh, absolutely yeah it's 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 good to get away and and you know your winter just was not nearly long enough I'm just gonna say it no. seemed like ours drug on forever and you were enjoying the fruits of summer and uh, I was looking forward to kind of grinding it into you this winter <laughs> and I just never you never complained about it. it it Melbourne must be great our winter was so mild this year um Oh, the, the the peanut gallery in the background just said it wasn't. <laughs> um, Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate that. <laughs> it's so cold this year. Our gas bill has gone through the roof. <laughs> oh, oh, so maybe it wasn't that mild, huh? Okay, so I thought it was fairly mild. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And oh, but, uh, awesome. yeah, we're uh, we we're coming into some some nice weather. So awesome, awesome. Looking well. forward to it. Good to have you tonight. Also filling in for Christian is the best, the next best thing to be in there, or maybe even better than being there. It's Gary Johnson. <laughs> Gary, how are you doing tonight? Just fine, Jim. Don't tell Christian I said that. Let's see, 950C plus 32. Andrew, it must be a pretty nice day there. <laughs> he was he was doing the Celsius yeah, the Fahrenheit calculation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's a uh, blue sky, a little bit of loose cloud. Great day for solar production. Well, it, it must be. We're we're in for a booger of a winter. I know it's coming. I can just feel it. We have had the best fall here in Nebraska that I I think in the 20 years that I've lived here, it has been fabulous. And you you know, when that happens, you are absolutely going to pay for it. And uh, and Gary, I don't know if you have any feeling for what your winter there in Buffalo is going to be like, but uh, well, what's the farmer's almanac say? I don't know, but we haven't seen the sun for about a month here, and it has rained every day for like three weeks and overcast. And it looks at noon, it looks like eight o'clock at night. It's been dreary. So well, maybe your winter will be all right. You guys get Let's tons hope. of snow, right? Yeah, we get plenty. We get plenty. It comes oh. right off Lake Erie and dumps right in at uh -huh. Buffalo, and uh, we have snow shovels at the doors all winter long. <laughs> 
Well, and, and we get really, really cold Arctic blasts that come down the Rocky Mountains. And uh, so I, I don't mind it that much, but uh, I, I just have a feeling for whatever reason it's going to be bad this year. Well, guys, I uh, appreciate you coming out tonight. We're uh, still trying to track down Chris Lux. He was going to be the guest tonight. And uh, if he comes out, we'll throw him in and get him going. I want to remind folks out on my site, I've been trying to search down a mini computer to match up with my Drobo or with a Drobo that I have from them. It's a five bay Drobo S um, that I want to load up. And then I want to put this mini computer on the top of it. If you go out to the average guy.tv, I think it's the very top post. Now I moved that up uh, earlier in the week. Um, so folks could take a look at it. By the time this show is posted, it may not be the top. You can just scroll down a few. Um, but what we're looking for, and, and what I've done is uh, actually at the homeservershow.com and from comments that folks have made on the post, trying to assemble the smallest, lightest, fastest, and that's, that's relative. Just it has to be fast enough to run Windows Home Server 2011. Um, although, as you'll hear at the end of the show with Mike Howard, that we've had some problems with 2011. So I don't know how smart this is maybe to move that direction right now. But since I am a Windows Home Server MVP, I should be doing that. Um, and so there's a couple options that I've been trying to track down uh, with that. Um, with So varying form factors, I really am looking for something kind of small that I can either stick under the, the, uh, the Drobo and use as a pedestal or set on top of the Drobo. Um, and, and it just looks cool. I'm trying to kind of keep it all condensed into one place. One of the, one of the few requirements is that, well, one, it runs, it gets powerful enough to run, uh, 2011 and it's got USB three. That is a non-negotiable. Um, and so if you want to take a, if you've got some time this week, head out to the average guy.tv, take a look at my list. Um, you can give me some advice if you want to, you can, uh, I've got a bunch of cases out there. I've got a bunch of boards, both AMD and Intel boards. Um, and I did the AMD ones for my coward because I know he's an AMD fanboy. Um, also got this bare bones unit, the Zotac uh, bare bones, very small AMD E350 CPU or the APU as they call it uh, in there. And um, a nice looking little five by five by one. Uh, oh, I forget the dimensions. One and, and three quarters or almost two inches high. Very, very nice small box. I could just set on top of the Drobo and that would be a really nice unit head out there guys uh any advice for me on uh and i'm looking for super ultra small form factor type things gary have you had you built anything super small or seen anything out there that uh that might fit that bill uh i played with stuff like that and done a lot of research on it uh, one thing that you really 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 want to be cognizant of is heat you get into yeah. these small form factors and uh I, I would if I was going to build something like that, I'd probably definitely go with an SSD for the OS, okay. just to minimize the heat. Um, I think the AMDs uh, have there have been heat related issues raised with the uh, the uh, AMD 350 uh, ITX form factors. Really? So, okay. Yeah, That's just good. be cautious good. with okay. that. And, um, I, I I've run into that mostly with guys that are using them for HTPCs. You know, like to slap them on the back of the TV with the vase amount. So uh, I, yeah. I would just be cautious with the heat dissipation and make sure that uh, you got sufficient cooling with whatever kind of cabinet you go with. Sure. One of the one of the things I've been kind of leaning towards is this icy dock MB982SPR, which is a basically allows you to take two laptop drives and put them together and raid those together yep. as one, and then it's the same size as a three and a half inch hard drive. Now, if you do that, go with that uh, that Seagate uh, XT, Momentus XT. Drive? Yeah, it's a hybrid. It's got four gigabytes of SSD as the oh, uh, buffer. Okay. And it's fast. Okay. It's, so it's fast. That's two and a half. I should probably be writing yep. this down. Hey, drop that in the show notes for me if you can find yep. it. You have the link to that, right? I'll link it for you. And, Perfect. Uh, yeah, it's got... Uh, I'll add that to my list here. They come in 500 gigabit. 500 gigabyte sizes. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I was my plan was to go with just a 160 and rate it because that's the the minimum size uh, for a home server, and then put all the storage on the Drobo, and of course use the Drobo's RAID to kind of be the first level of protection for the data, uh, and then I would uh, eventually back that up to I've got a, a one terabyte. Um, IO safe that I would plug into there as well and uh, use that as the uh, the second level of backup um, and so that would be fire and waterproof it would go a lot slower because it's just USB 2 but 
that's okay. I only do it once a month um, for fire, you know, fireproof and waterproof backup. And then, of course, I'm going to use a, some kind of cloud service, uh, a voila, crash plan, something like that to back up uh, to the cloud and uh, and make sure those files stay in sync. Andrew, any uh, any thoughts on any hardware I should add to that, you think? Uh, I am a fan of the AMD uh, 350 or even the 450, which is probably, from what I see, it's probably a couple of weeks away from being released into mainstream. So the, okay. the 450s, I think, a 1.8 gigahertz processor instead of 1.6. So that'd probably run the um, run Windows Home Server 2011 just a little bit better. Yeah, sure. Okay. But I, had, I hadn't heard of the thermal issues. What's so, uh, so. what's the uh, the chip that I have in that? Do you remember that HP DM1Z that I bought? What's the what's that, the? That's a that's a 350, I think. Yeah. Is it? So so that's just had a refresh to a DM1 4000 series. Okay. Which has now got the 450 in it. That fan does run a lot on that, and, yeah. and there's, it puts out a little heat. Uh, and not vali- validating what Gary just said, but it does. Yeah. It does run a little warm, so maybe that does validate Gary a little bit. Are you running the latest BIOS on it? Because I know there's a BIOS fix for oh. um, the, the, the CoolSense AMD feature. With the, you know, I think I just upgraded to that through the HP support um, oh, the, software yep. that's on there. Actually, I found that. I've just been railing on HP lately, but that ate that that little <laughs> that little. I, I'm starting to sound like Christian. I'm like, holy cow! What, you know he what? Gets it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am running. Yeah, I think I'll have to double check, but I think that did an automatic BIOS update for me just recently, and um, so yeah, maybe okay. I should check that. It's not it's not unbearably hot. I set it right on the desk. I don't have a cooler for it. I never pick it up and. Uh, get a lot of heat out of it. I run a core i5 on my work laptop and, and that actually runs just a smidge warmer. Um, and so, eh, you know, it's, it's anecdotal. I don't have any, I haven't gone in there and measured the CPU temperature or anything like that. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, comparatively I've got two laptops on the desk in front of me at the moment because I'm cutting over my work machine and I've got a Centrino Core 2 Duo and a Core i5 and the, heat factor between the two is phenomenal the i5 you can hardly feel the heat in comparison to the centrino so i think you know i think they're getting better they are getting a lot yeah. better yeah my my yeah. core i3 Come is on. almost a refrigerator i mean i yeah. just I, I can't i think i get zero heat off that thing yeah, yeah i think the, i think sorry i was just going to say I, I you know looking for a like a mini itx platform for the server i you know the core i3 would be a really good candidate yeah, yeah. No, I've got a Core i3 on there on on the uh, on the site there that I'm looking at paired up with the Gigabyte board. Andrew, yeah, I was going to say I would have thought with the um, AMD, a lot of them are passively cooled. So potentially, if you were to get one that's got a fan in it, you might have less issues with the thermal cooling as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I run I run probably fifty fifty with AMD and Intel and. You know, the Intel costs a little more, but I think you get what you pay for. And, yeah. in fact, that's one of the things in my discussion tonight with the new bulldozers coming out. Uh, I think AMD's at kind of a critical juncture here where they've got to really demonstrate that, uh, you know, they can elevate their game and, and stay competitive in the marketplace. But uh, it's getting tougher and tougher for them. Intel's really, really dominating them in almost every category right now. Other than eight cores, right, for domestic platform or consumer platform. Which one? Uh, I didn't AMD re- release their eight core a couple they just, weeks ago. Just did, yes. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm hearing I'm hearing rumors that the uh, you know the production quality on them is is suspect, and they had a lot of lot of problems getting that to market. And uh, uh, even Mike in the in the pre-show mentioned that uh, the performance of the eight core wasn't quite as good as the, uh, the, uh, the older six core, the Thuban yeah, six okay. core. So I, you know, I, I haven't read all the stats and all the, the verdict on it. Um, there is the six core, the 95 watt six core is one that I'm probably going to buy to upgrade my server with a 65 watt, uh, quad core in it now, but, yep. uh, but again, like I say, if I was starting from the ground up, you know, if I was to up, I'm going to probably upgrade what I have installed right now with AMD stuff. I'll add a CPU to make that 
box a little faster. Yeah. But if I was to build a box from scratch today at almost every level, I'd be going and tell. Yeah. Okay. I do. Uh, I, I am a kind of a fan of this, this second gen i3, i5, i7 platform. And uh, it's, it's getting more efficient. And you just mentioned it, Andrew. I, they're just getting cooler. It's weird. It's, 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 each chip gets a smidge cooler as they figure out how not to burn so many cycles and uh, make them so hot. Yeah. Well, Christian's, Christian's running uh, an AMD 6 core Thuban, 1055, I think. I know it, it, it's it was the the best one that was out there when right. I bought it for him. Right. And I've been I've been running uh, an Intel Core i7 950 for probably two years now, and it kicks it kicks the daylights out of his six really? core. Right. Yep. Well, that's uh, good. It's it's a much faster system. Can handle a lot more load. Multi. S same memory speed. You know the the memory speed as far as the uh, CPU. I I'm not sure what his is. I mean the uh, the 950 is at three gigahertz. I think uh, it's a three yeah. gigahertz quad core. But but that 1366 socket core i7, man, it's a bear. Okay. And and I paid I think I paid like twelve hundred dollars for that box, and that was an HP box that I had a lot of trouble, you know, getting <laughs> getting it ironed out right uh it had a lot of crashes so i bought the 920 it was a core i7 920 when i started am or uh, hp swapped my box four times before i finally got one that worked right right by then they upgraded me to the nine the core i7 950 they upgraded me from a one terabyte drive to a 1.5 terabyte drive and they never asked me for the keyboard or the mice back. So I got a nice collection of keyboard and mouse. I got a bigger hard drive. I got the faster CPU. And and that core that core i7 950 CPU on Newegg still sells for like 260 bucks. Yeah. yeah. So I, I definitely got my money's worth out of the box. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and I, I could upgrade. I I'm on a first gen core i3. 350? No. What's the numbers on the Core i, the first generation Core i, threes? It doesn't matter. Um, first gen, and I and I can that board will support an i7, and I've thought about seeing if I can get one on a fire sale as they're clearancing those out. And uh, I don't know. I love the Core i3; it just works for me. So, all right. Well, we've enough of those. If you want to uh, give me some input, I'll be doing this for another week or two on the Drobo build. Um, great discussion around this, guys. There's a lot. I am um, I am leaning towards as well. You know, as we talk about this. There's a really nice case that I found uh, out there, and I think maybe I just closed it. Nope, there it is. Um, so it's an Antec ISK 300-150 uh, mini ITX. That's one of the other requirements. I want a small board. Comes with a internal 150 watt power supply. 70 bucks on Newegg. It's about the size that I want. It would fit nicely as a pedestal underneath the Drobo, and uh, and give me the option for a drive. You know, for an optical drive as well. So that wouldn't be bad. I could pair that with, uh, you know, with a Core i3 and have a nice little box that could even repurpose to a um, HTPC down the road if I wanted to. So some good stuff out there. If you've got some suggestions for me, let it fly. Either, either leave a po uh, comment on uh, theaverageguy.tv or go over to Facebook and uh, drop it there or homeservershow.com in the forums. There's a post for it. All right. We talked a little bit earlier about recycle programs. Uh, Gary and I were talking, and I just uh, wanted to let folks know that if you've got a bunch of PCs laying around, and who doesn't have a bunch of crap, crappy PCs <laughs> that they can't get rid of, don't throw them in the landfill. That's the wrong thing to do. Uh, if you're here in the United States, there's uh, places like Best Buy, and I even think there's some trade-in programs around. Maybe if you check with your local Office Depot, Office Max, Staples, uh, any of those kind of big box stores, sometimes they're getting more responsible about taking them on recycle. You might want to check with your city, uh, your city um, trash collection. That's not that's not really what they call it anymore, is it? The what do they call themselves? But uh, whoever hauls your trash away, you might have a day when they pick those things up. Sometimes they charge you, sometimes they don't. Check around. I know Gazelle now is uh, partnering with Newegg, and sometimes you can sell it back to them, even if they don't take it for money. Uh, they'll send you a box and they'll recycle it. Guys, any other, um, Andrew, any special recycling um, things in there in Australia? Yeah, there used to be in Victoria where we are a, um, a program called PCs for Kids. 
so what they what used to happen there is you'd take all your old crappy machines to them and if um if they could you know bring various components be it memory disk you know video cards whatever um together to build um machines for kids who can't because folks necessarily can't afford them oh, that's a nice way to do it yeah then they so they fix them and add components to them and mm -hmm. and that stuff yeah, and, so, and get them yeah they'll sort of make make the best of a bad lot i was doing that for a while just you know I'd collect parts and then somebody would say, oh, I need a PC for something. So well, let me just, you know, I'll put a bunch of junk together and give it to you. And that worked yeah. for some college students, some things. Like, it's hard to do that now because they put so many requirements on these college kids. Um, well, and I, what I've found is a lot of people, you say, well, you know, I'll give you a Pentium 3, 8, 800, 800 megahertz processor or something similar like that. And they just go, why? Yeah. Well, right. hey, you know, well, you know, what's, what's wrong with free, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Other Jim out in chat says uh, free cycle. That's at free uh, f r e e c y c l e dot org. Is it looks like an organization that will take it. Gary, do you have any? Uh, you got any uh, recycling tips? Uh, find unsuspecting relatives. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, sure. This hey, is you great want stuff. This? I know best. Ah. I know Best Buy charges uh, ten dollars for monitors, CR, old CRT monitors. But they give it back to you in a ten dollar gift card, so it's kind of nice. It's uh, I've had some monster CRTs that I've recently gotten rid of. Gary, it looks like you got a CRT right behind you there. I still got my old Hitachi. What are they? Nine hundred three twenty inch. Uh, yeah, Hitachi SuperScan eight thirteens. That was a two thousand dollar monitor back in the day. Yeah, which isn't that crazy? I, I picked up from a. A wholesaler out in San Diego who reprocessed stuff for two hundred bucks a piece, and yeah. I used I and they still run. They still yeah. have a beautiful, gorgeous. I, I use them for I use them for troubleshooting and right. debugging. Right, I got one out in the garage. It's a good, good. I got a big twenty-one inch monitor out in the garage that uh, I've had for ten or eleven years, and those things were expensive. Most of them I bought from work as they were getting rid of them. And they'd sell them for 50 bucks, you know, and, and uh, it, boy, it was just maybe three years ago that I actually got my first flat screen. So we've, we've quickly moved. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's handy because, you know, like people, people will bring in old stuff that they need me to take a look at and try and fix. So right. having something like that that takes that old VGA plug and. Right. Yeah, Keep, keeps the spare parts. I was talking to a guy this week who said his computer was having trouble and i said well hey and he goes it's really old and i said well i still have a parallel um <laughs> uh, usb external you know drive enclosure that that you would yeah. put together and i've held on to it just for that purpose because i know i'm going to have a friend that their you know their old pc is going to take a crap and they're going to have those pictures on it that they they <clears> want back and and i can get them back i think if the drive hasn't failed i can get it back for them um, using that equipment. So you want to keep some of that stuff around. You know, the uh, the Pentium 2 uh, um, slot uh, uh, processors, you probably, you know, there's probably no <laughs> need to. I stripped a bunch of those out about six or seven years ago from some PCs and st uh, stacked them up in a, in, a, in a closet out in the garage. Probably no need to keep that kind of stuff around anymore. Don't um, think so. Some old sound cards and such that... Uh, uh, what I actually do is I, I pull the hard drive out of the PC and then I jam as much of this crap in it as I can and then I take it to Best Buy <laughs> and just turn it in. So it's kind of like Gazelle except uh, Best Buy's taking it. And they, they do no questions asked. I mean, it's just take it to the store. They say, did you take the hard drive out? Because they don't want the hard drive. Um, just take the hard drive out. You say yes. They say they slap a recycle sticker on it and say thank you. And uh, that's <laughs> it. No no questions asked. So um, what, do they, what do they do with it? Uh, I think they send it to, they got a third party that um, they try and salvage as much as they can and resell that stuff on eBay or whatever. I, and, mm -hmm. I would imagine nowadays most of it's just crushed, smelted, and broken down back into you would hope. basic elements. I mean, you, you know, you so. got silver and gold in there and copper and Le uh, mercury. You, you melt it all down, separate it out. You probably yeah. get a decent... Uh, a decent buck for it so yeah. they don't well, they don't they don't take hard drives anymore well oh that's okay. a shame <laughs> <laughs> as gary is stacking i got a stack just like that gary i'll be honest with you that that's just the one on my desk <laughs> my kids uh like to take them apart and pull the magnets out of them 
Ah, cool. And uh, and then it's just they leave me with a heap. That pretty much guarantees the data is gone, you know, once they do that, right? And then uh, so I got a heap of metal, and I just take those to the, um, uh, I just take that to the, to the trash, and they recycle the metal or whatever. So we actually have a service at work that that you that takes those hard drives and sends them through shredders. And it wow. just it shreds the hard drive. Can you imagine the grinder? Pretty that stout shredder. Just drop that in. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, just awesome them to watch. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, they chip a hard drive into. Yeah, they chip a hard drive into like five millimeter pieces. Yeah, yeah. What'd you say, Gary? Yeah, I say, and then they probably take the shards and melt them all down. And yeah, yeah. Hopefully, that's we got to get better about that as a planet. So it's it's uh, some of the stuff we cannot. Uh, I was at um, I was at the Kansas City Art Institute a couple weekends ago visiting my son who's in college down there, and he uh, so we're, one of his professors. It was Parents' Day, and so this professor, the, one of the professors, was uh, given a class, you know, kind of a summary class. And one of the um, one of the uh, projects they have to do is they have to go out and find a bunch of junk and bring it in. And then they stack it all up and they, they use that as the subject, right. For their art, which is really cool. So you got different angles, different textures, different quality kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's just a really great exercise. I think and, the last episode of CSI was about that. Oh, really? Yeah. It was junk art. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they, he said this statement and it just kind of struck me. He goes, you know, if there's one thing we do well as Americans, uh, that is we make junk. Tons of it. Just, just an enormous, and and you can see Gary from your the back of your camera and the back of mine, which I got this PC up. It's just a piece of junk, but but um, it uh, we are good at collecting junk. So, um, other Jim also posted in chat uh, uh, dban.org for deleting the data off your hard drives before you send them in. I think we talked about that on one of these shows one time of how to. This would have been early, Andrew, back in the early days of the podcast how to yeah. delete uh, data, basically any kind of data off your hard drive and make sure all of it is gone. Um, that's at dban.org. We'll drop that uh, in the show notes for you. It's quite, it's quite a while ago we talked about that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can yeah, go I've, I've used it. Have you? Yeah. I, I guess I'm just not paranoid enough, and I, I don't know. i got a stack of hard drives too, and I guess from time to time I've cleared them, but I don't know. I guess I don't have anything worth getting in anybody else's hands. So... Um, since I've moved my finances to the cloud and I use mint.com. Oh, you are a trusting soul. <laughs> I, yeah, I just don't. It's not local anymore. Ain't nobody yeah. getting my numbers. <laughs> yeah, well, it's horribly convenient and it works really well. So it's uh, not a nice service. Um, uh, also in pre-show or Andrew, right before we came on, you were talking about changing your Internet service provider over. Actually, your your uh, throughput tonight has been dynamite. I mean, your audio has been good and video has been great. That's not typical. Um, I it's just unusual, kill. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is kind of unusual. Usually, we struggle with you a little bit. Um, you were talking about maybe upgrading to cable, and so that would change. What do you currently have now, and what would that change it to? Uh, we currently got an eight megabit download, and I think it's seven sixty eight kilobit upload on um, ADSL. So um, that'd probably bring us up to I think about thirty meg and thirty meg down and five meg up. Yeah, that you'd really join that. You'd really join us in the. In the realm of yeah. speed, yeah, yeah. The, the only the only reluctance I have, of course, is I don't know how subscribed our street is and our node on the cable node at the moment. So you know, if everyone's downloading something at the same time or streaming video or something like that, you know, you get the slice of the pie. Yeah, and you know, we have that too. I'm on a cable modem, and Gary, you're on a cable modem, right? At this point, nope. no. Oh, that's right. You're fire. I'm, I'm on fiber optic. You're, you're fire. And, and, and it. It's the next step above cable. It, yeah. it just, it's fabulous. Uh, I, I, I run uh, the speed test from Speakeasy and speedtest.net and like clockwork, every time I test it, I get 43 megabits per second down and I get 30 megabits per second up. And that's under, that doesn't matter what the weather is, how many people are surfing or what. It's 43 down and 30 up. That's awesome. Day in, day out. That's awesome. That's got to be my next, my next purchase. That's not an option for us here in the Omaha market. So, um, uh, be, for us, yeah. be glad. Well, Andrew, a big step for you would be cable, 
And yep. uh, so we, if we're starting the uh, Andrew Morris uh, Cable Scholarship Fund, <laughs> send, send donations directly to TheAverageGuy.tv. We do have a do uh, donation link, so if you want to make donations to Andrew's change over to cable, <laughs> that, that would be great. Um, yeah, go, and, click, go click the New Egg link and buy something for us. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, or just just the Google ads gets us a little a few dollars. So um, yeah. one of the things I did this week is I just canceled my uh, voice over IP. Gary, you'd said you'd had vo uh, voice over IP for about 10 years. I was surprised to find out it was eight. For me, I had no idea I had been on voice over IP that long. And we had gone with a company called Packet 8 or 8x8. Eight eight, and you they... Know, Go ahead. I, I gotta I gotta think it's even longer than that, Jim. I, I've had it almost ever since I've lived here, and that was we've been here over twenty years. So yeah, it's it's probably more like fifteen years or better. Yeah. And I started. It's funny because I started with Uma, and and that lowered my phone bill. Right. You know, from like sixty sixty five dollars a month down to to it was uh, I I got the fifteen dollar a month package but with the fees it came to about 20 bucks a month right and that was unlimited long or that was five 500 minutes a month which we never went over right and then uh you know just about the time they came out with the commercials hey i got the vantage this is my right. last phone bill and they toss it on the pile i'm sitting there laughing because like three months before like i switched to uma and there's my Vonage bill. Yeah, because right. Because instead of 15 bucks a month plus the fees and spending $20, $25 a month on Vonage, I'm spending $3.47 a month for phone. Right, right. <laughs> well, you know, I used to in the early days, God, the phone bill used to just drive me nuts. And I, it was so expensive. You know, I think think back 20 years ago, 20, 15, 20 oh. years ago, phone was expensive. Oh, if, if you had my wife, uh, all, all her family live in the Baltimore area, so... Right. I'd get the phone bill and I'd oh. look at the long distance bill and I'm like, oh my God, you know, yes. I'm over a hundred dollars a month for oh, a phone it's, bill. It's and, like, I, ah. and Gary, that used to, I, I, so there's a little bit of a paradox here because that used to drive me nuts, right? And now I'm willing to shell out, now we got five phones, but we're all our cell phones put together. 225 bucks a month yeah. is what we And you don't even think anything I don't, I don't even bat an eye at it. No, right? that's and, good. I got a good deal uh, on my cell they phones. Have just <laughs> suckered, they have just suckered me into that thing. Now, it, we can't. I mean, our cell phones give our kids incredible freedom, and and yeah. uh, the for the ability for us to track them down anywhere. So we're not moving away from that at all. But Neither are we. it it is. Uh, you know, we went completely cell phone this week, and I called Packet Eight, and they said, you know, is there a problem with the price? I said, no, we're just we just don't want to mess with the landline. No was no one was checking the messages anymore. Um, I mean, I think I actually think I didn't the, the my credit card expired and it's for two months. I think they shut me off a month ago and I don't think anybody noticed. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's just one of those things where the landline is gone. We don't even think that way anymore. And no. everyone's so attached to their cell phone. My daughter, who had a cell phone for three days, it, it, it's like she's had it for uh, a year. I mean, she is so good on that thing now. And she's she had. I bet she had 30 texts sent out in the first hour. Oh, you, ever, you ever watch these kids text? Oh. oh, my God. They can text faster than I can talk. Yeah. We got her a slide-out keyboard on her phone. That's what she wanted. And she, oh, yeah. it's, it, it is like she was, she was made for that phone. At it's first incredible. day, just, just typing away. Closing <laughs> I mean, it was just crazy. So uh, voice over IP, which I thought I was so revolutionary, and maybe I was eight or so years ago moving to that, uh, is now dead to me, so to speak, and uh, have made the transition on to cell phone only. I had to boot a kid off. That was the only bad thing is my second oldest. We booted my oldest off uh, back in the spring, and then I had to boot number two off to give them their own lines. And then, you know what? They're working. They need to cover that yeah, stuff. Yeah, right? you know, grow up. <laughs> yeah, get out. Is, uh, did I say that out loud? Uh, Hold up. <laughs> but uh, so we booted him off, and uh, Sprint, you know, we transferred the liability uh, over to that, and he picked up a new phone in the process and, and got that taken care of. But uh, just the price thing, right? I mean, I just God, it used to kill me when I get a $200. And I didn't get a $200 bill every month. Um, and now I pay two twenty five, just no problem. Just comes right out of, and right out of the account. Now it kills me. Oh yeah, yep. it's uh, it's we've just traded one thing well, for another. It, it, I, I I I laugh too because uh, well I I I have I drive a twenty a, a two thousand ten Honda Accord, beautiful car, thirty thousand dollar car. Cell phone, and 
my Verizon Fios subscription, combine those two, which is basically my communications bill. Yeah. Is more than my car. Than your car payments. Yep. That's painful. It is. It <laughs> yeah. really is. Yeah, and we don't bat an eye at it. I mean, it's. But but again, I use I use I use the cell phones and I use the internet all day long, and so does my family. And uh, yeah, yeah, it, you know, it's a must-have for us. No, right on. I can't, and I'm so tied to it with work and and uh, such. You just you have to. You have to do it. So interesting. One little last tidbit of information uh, this week, Vint Cerf. If you know, if you don't know who Vint Cerf is, V-I-N-T-C-E-R-F, uh, he's the actually the father of the Internet, uh, believe it or not. Uh, he helped create it, not Al Gore. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was in town, and he's a friend of Gallup and a uh, senior scientist for Gallup and uh, working with the local university, which we are as well, UNO, University of Nebraska at Omaha. Got to hear him speak a couple times. Just fascinating guy, and he's still... He is still moving and thinking and creating and maybe the smartest guy I've ever met. He is just crazy smart. Talking about IPv6 coming out, you know, we're, we're, we're out of Internet. Uh, if you didn't know, we are out of Internet addresses. They are gone. Um, IPv4 have all been taken up and been reserved. There are pockets of them that have been reserved by companies and such that uh, you can still get those. Of course, the prices are getting a little higher on those because the demand is high and the supply is low. Um, next I want to say next March, next April is uh, they did IPv6 day this year, um, and I forget what day that was on. Next next year they're going to do IPv6 week and try and get everybody to switch over to version six and just see what kind of problems they have. We are eventually going to have to move over to a different addressing system for the internet. I mean it's it's inevitable. We we don't have enough addresses. We continue to put devices that need IP addresses on the internet at, a, at an alarming, and that's probably not, it's the wrong word to use, but at an amazing rate. Um, and so get ready. I mean, I, this isn't something we're talking a lot about, but uh, it's going to be a, re a reality for most of us as we switch our systems over from, you know, IPv4 to I IPv6. It is coming, and I, I know Windows is thinking about it, and there's some embedded IPv6 functionality inside it already. I know the cable providers or the internet providers are doing nothing it seems mm -hmm. at this point yeah. to get ready for it. Yeah, I know the, our um, internet provider that we use, they're just going to, at the moment, they're saying they're just going to use network address translation <sighs> on IPv4. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I, I reckon that's going to cause its own, um, its own issues. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's going to take us, a, I, it'll probably take us a solid decade I about oh, I bet we I won't some. we won't be switched over until the end of the decade. He's hoping a lot sooner um, for that. But interestingly enough, he's there, you know they're building. I don't know if you guys knew this, but they're building an interplanetary uh, internet that will sure, go. Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, between the Earth, the Moon, and Mars. So as we start, and we we don't have anything orbiting the Moon at this point, but as the they have missions starting in 2015 and for any orbiter that goes up or any satellite goes up it's going to go up with equipment that can create this uh this um oh, what do you call it in space it's terrestrial no is that what it's called up there in space anyways it'll create this network of 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 um you know basically routers that spacecraft can use to access the internet uh in space and uh move they're already thinking about how they're going to move data packets from Earth to Mars. And uh, kind of cool, some kind of cool stuff. And and not like space, you know, this is like going to be hundreds of years from now or 50 years from now. I mean, this is stuff that they're already thinking about, and it's going into current NASA missions as we send stuff into space. So they're thinking about how are we going to get connectivity, IP connectivity, and it's not really what it's called, but how are we going to get uh, connectivity in space? Isn't that crazy? So, I good. It's kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You know, yeah. Here's my first tweet from the moon. Got here. Lol. Yeah. Ash moon tweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up. Got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Your battery's dead. Um, <laughs> you know. Well, you know. The roaming costs would be a bitch, wouldn't it? Think Imagine about. <laughs> think about the yeah. rover on. Uh, think about the rovers that they've sent out there, and as we continue to send more equipment and type things. Mm. They would all use then instead of having to to build high power transmitters into those. Of course, they could use lower power lower power transmitters to go up to the satellites, and then because sometimes you can't communicate, those things can't communicate when they're on the on the other side, right? Because they lose communication when the planet 
when Mars rotates around, it's not facing Earth. Well, it's basically uh, what they did with the Mars rovers. Right, right. Spirit and Opportunity. And yep. that, those were remarkable missions. In right. fact, I think Opportunity is still functional. I think Spirit died um, and can't get restarted, but I think the other one is still actually moving around the the uh, the planet. And, and what they do is they relay up to the orbiting craft, and then that gets right. relayed back to yeah. NASA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so there's a little bit of that in it now. I mean, they're talking about a full-fledged internet, uh, you know, uh, interplanetary internet, um, where where those packets get stored and then forwarded when a when a connection becomes available. So, some pretty cool stuff. I I, I think it's coming out here pretty quick, and and uh, just an interesting day with Vint Surf and uh, Rennie says one small tweet for man. <laughs> <laughs> That is good, <laughs> Gary. You uh, a couple. Give me the name of the show. <laughs> that's right. That's right. If we name the show that way, um, Gary, you guys purchased a Silicon Dust HD Home Run Prime, and that's been in the house now for a while. Uh, how's that experiment going for you guys? It's actually uh, got its ups and downs. Um, basically, it works well when it works. And tell me before you start, get, just give us a quick breakdown on the Prime and what that is. It is a wonderful concept, and what it is is that there's a small, a small box, typical, I, I guess about the size of a typical modem, and you you purchase a, an M card, cable card from your provider, the same that you would put in a TiVo or any other type of tuning device, and you put that in a slot in the in the prime, and then inside the prime are three tuners. So in theory, this device should be able to tune in to three separate digital cable channels with the decryption provided by the M card that you get from your cable company. Typical render, rental fee for the M card is like $4 a month. The unique part about it is, is that you don't plug this into your computer. You plug this device into your router or switch. Now, when you do that, these three tuners are available to any computers on your network on a first-come, first-served basis. So, <laughs> Yeah, through, like, Windows Media Center. Right. Right. So, uh, basically, it, it works as advertised beautifully um, on any of my wired computers. Okay, hardwired. Anything that's yeah. hardwired okay. to gigabit LAN is working fine. Where I'm having trouble is with my wired systems. Hmm. I've got a small, I got a small laptop, my little, uh, my little Asus uh, tablet, my little yeah. Atom, dual core Atom powered thing. If it's the only device that's watching television, it 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 it'll run for hours with no problem. The minute I I start getting other tuners activated, then the tablet starts throwing errors. We Weak signal, viewer listening conflict, no tuner available, that sort of thing. So I've got the engineers at Silicon Dust promising me that they're going to look at my logs that I've sent them and hmm. try and do some diagnostics. But like I say, for the most part, for what I do, it already works and does what I want it to do. But it still isn't quite functioning as advertised, which would be all three tuners engaged at the same time, giving adequate service to all the devices that should be able to access it. Okay. And primarily the only difficulties with my wired or my wireless devices. And I've tested my uh, LAN speed on the wireless tab on the tablet on the wireless. I'm getting a, a minimum of 35 megabits per second up and down. So and each channel takes about about 10 megabits per second so it really shouldn't be a problem you don't think you know the the wireless connections sometimes use some burst technology and i'm not getting that right but but you know they they can speed up and slow down that connection kind of yep. based on you don't think that's having any kind of effect on it as the the router's trying to you know you're pushing a lot of bandwidth through there it it might and the the thing i'm but the the fact that when the wireless device is the only one that's being employed. There's no, there's no problem. I can't see this as being a problem with the router, with the wireless router. 
I'm, I'm more thinking that when you get all three tuners in, involved and they're all trying to pipe that data out the same network connection, that somehow maybe the internal processing in the HD home run isn't able to get all the packets out the pipe at the same time. Sure. So, right. I, I, again, yeah. it's, it's hard to pinpoint. And they're working with you on that, Silicon Dust? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. No, very they've been cool. very, very, you know, communicative. So is wired, if you keep, if all three are wired, it works great at this yep. point for you as advertised. Do you have three different, uh, so on your network, do you have uh, multiple PCs recording multiple programs based on who's using those PCs then? Well, we can. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, we can go to any computer in the house right. and fire up Windows Media Center and pull up a tuner right. and, and right. either watch or record. So, yeah, when I'm testing, I run up to Christian's room, I get his going, I come back down, I get yeah. mine going, and I go get my tablet and get that going. And, but, uh, yeah, there's plenty. Of, we've got plenty of desktops that can pull on it to test it. So, Yeah, yeah that's cool. I use their older version, a uh, dual tuner. Uh, for that, and we actually have a HTPC out in the living room that the wife uses to record her shows, and then I do the same thing and have a whole set of different recorded. And I don't, I don't watch what she watches. I try not to, anyways. And and uh, <laughs> uh, Andrew's smiling, and um, he knows the deal. The uh, yeah. and then I I record my shows, which are the nerdy, you know, uh, Nova and some of those PBS stuff and uh, this old house and some of that stuff. Um, and, and then I can watch it here or she can watch it there and it works real great for that. So it's a good, that's a good little system to come up with. No, it's, it's good technology. There's no doubt. Yeah. Now mine will pull down over the air. So I don't, I don't purchase cable. Um, I get the, the basic cable. I, I shouldn't say I don't purchase it. I do. I get the basic cable. It's 20 bucks here right. and that's just 29 channels or 28, whatever that is. And, and, and then not I pull, encrypted, right? it is not encrypted and I pull over the air as well. And, uh, and so we get our HD channels through over the air, which works great. I need to get a little bit better of an antenna. I'll just be honest. This, this winter, I'm going to probably hook something up and, and get, I just have a little flat RCA. It's 12 by 12 or so, 12 inches by 12 inches. And uh, it works okay. I could do better. I just, I need to get something hooked up on that. But that's a, a good way to do that. Andrew, you just put a link in, uh, in Skype chat. And, and this is alarming and disturbing to me. But are you saying that HP is going to keep the PC unit now? Is that what, yeah, is, just, that what uh, is that I what ZDNet just, uh, is? I, not that I want to get Gary yeah, just, riled up on, uh, on HP again. No, it's okay. <laughs> that way I got somebody to pick on. <laughs> hey, maybe Meg Whitman will straighten it out, you know. So what's well, that article reckon, saying? Well, basically they're saying that um, that um, Meg Whitman promised she'd make a quick decision, and she has. Wow. Well, so I think they're, it's, they're saying. I think it's a good move, actually. I think it's a plus for the consumer because yeah. I think I think HP keeps prices down. I really do. Sometimes at the expense of quality, but it, at least it creates competition. <laughs> so does that mean uh, the touchpad may have a life? Well, I don't know if um, if you saw across the market or across the market across the uh, the blogosphere over uh, the last few days. Um, I was reading somewhere the other day that they're testing Windows 8 embedded on yeah, the touchpad. Yeah, I, I saw that too. In fact, there's a link or there's a um, thread in the Home Server Show th uh, forums, and we've been talking about that. And and I, I'm mm. I'm like, I I was under the impression or I believe that the that that HP hardware was not as good as it could have been for that OS. Now there's some other folks who feel like the OS is not ready for prime time and that was really good hardware. So if it was really uh, good hardware, you then... don't go ahead, Gary. You don't think there with Meg Whitman at the helm, there might not be some synergy with a tablet for eBay. No, oh, never mm. thought of that. Uh, eh, boy. Uh, well, I I, I'm just saying, you know, good, Am Amazon, thought. Barnes yeah. and Noble, I mean, yeah. they're, they're right. hitching the tablet yeah. to a specific sure. company to a, and to function. A market. And yeah, yeah. No, that's not a bad thought. You know, what's wrong with an eBay tablet? Andrew, what's your opinion of the hardware, though? Um, look, having used it for about a month now, I think the heart, the biggest thing I don't like about the hardware is that feel. I always feel like I'm going to drop it. Uh, and I, and I don't know if it. I don't know if that's because of the way I hold it, or if it's just me being nervous about dropping something that should have been worth the 700 bucks that I got for 150. <laughs> yeah. But well, you wouldn't feel as bad if you dropped it, it 
paying 150 as you would if you'd have paid 700. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. That's one consolation. But, yeah, I mean, I think if it were an iPad, you know, if I'd go out and drop 900 bucks on an iPad and you drop that, you'd be gutted. Whereas oh, just I think that, if. Just on a side note, uh, Christian came home from school today and announced that uh, the school he attends will be requiring all students in his high school next year to have an iPad 2, uh -huh. and yeah. they will not be purchasing textbooks next year. Yeah. All textbooks will be on the iPad. He uh, he mentioned that, I think, just last week, too. So he was a little yeah. late, maybe a little late in telling you, Gary. But, yeah, uh, yeah that's... <laughs> no I, doubt. <laughs> I think, yeah, you know, welcome to life, Dad, right? Uh, yeah. I get that all the time for my kids, too. Oh, Dad, I didn't tell you? No, you didn't tell me. Uh, no, he's been talking about it, but apparently it's been made official. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so maybe he had said they were considering it. Yes. Uh, in, in there, but um, yeah, I I can you know um, I can attest. So, Andrew, you don't think? Uh, sorry to keep coming back to that, but I, I have a special interest in this hardware or so, uh, so hardware software. I mean, is that tablet good enough to put Windows 8 on? Do you think? Yeah, I think what from what I'm reading, um, the ARM process will probably let it down. Um, although Windows embedded, I think will run on ARM. So I think the hardware is good enough. I mean, a lot of the guys that work around me are running um, Android 2.3.7 on it, and um, it runs brilliantly okay. as an Andro oh, with Android. Okay. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, yeah. the maybe the hardware is up to snuff, and, uh, and the OS well, isn't as ready for prime time. Although you said they just released, released a patch a couple weeks ago, right, that kind of upgraded yeah. that. Yeah, they went to 3.0.4, and the performance has improved out of sight. Okay. Very cool. Well, if anybody wants yeah. to give me their HP touchpad, I'm still taking them, by the way. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it'll be interesting to see what goes on at HP, Gary. I, I agree with you. I think that competition is good for the market. So them, yeah. them leaving the PC market was a bad deal. Let's hope May can turn things around from a directional decision before Oracle buys HP. And mm -hmm. uh, let's, um, you know, let's just hope. Because uh, reduced competition is not good. I agree. I, it just like I say, it just they're they're a low cost provider when you when you look at what they provide and 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 basically I learned through experience that when you buy an HP box a system it's got the minimum of everything to just yeah. make it yeah. do what it got so <laughs> Barely. Don't, you know you know that that power supply has just it. enough you know yeah. so but yeah. but again by 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 putting a product out at that price point, it keeps the Dells and everybody else honest. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They, they can't. Hey, Gary, let's be clear about something real quick. I'm seeing some notes in chat that if, if pe people may have misinterpreted what you said about the iPad being required, Christian goes to a private school. Yes, that's yeah, correct. Right, not a public school. Yep. So It's a Catholic school, and yeah. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but Catholic University is being sued by Muslims as being too Catholic <laughs> and, and not, not providing prayer space for the Muslim uh, students. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, maybe, it's... maybe Christians in for that next year. As yeah. well. <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's America is a great place to live. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. At least, at least almost... you haven't had the situation where there's um, that, that same denominational factor have tried to change the words to your, na to your national anthem. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, well, well, yeah, but we've we've got a we've got a congressman who's suing the voters for the election he lost. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? I didn't Only make in it. America. Yeah, <laughs> still the greatest country in the world besides Amen. besides Australia, of course, right? Um, speaking of great countries, uh, over the last year, of course, we've had some natural disasters uh, all over the world, and many of them focused in places that make the devices that we really like, right? So the tsunami in Japan uh, recently, there's been a whole rash of floods that really have not made the news that much uh, in Thailand, right, that, that uh, have wiped out some hard drive factories or at least slowed that down. Gary, you're seeing that, and I haven't been following this. I've not been buying hard drives. I've got I, I've got a bunch of them that I'm kind of stocked up on. So I haven't. Uh, I kind of did the full fauché on that one and uh, loaded up on hard drives. But <laughs> I uh, wish I had. <laughs> yeah. So what are you seeing out there? Well, I, I can say uh, I I I think I mentioned the last time I was on when I when I highlighted my deal of the day that uh, 
the three terabyte uh, 7200 RPM Seagate drive was on sale at Newegg for $149, which was the lowest I'd ever seen it, which was a steal. Right. You can't find one of those drives now for less than 250 bucks. Um, and at Newegg, they show it at 179 but then when you click to put it in your basket, that tells you that it must be purchased with other hardware. Uh -huh. And the cheapest option is like 400 bucks for whatever they bundle with it, some memory chips or whatever. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I've done some reading. Um, the plants that produce a lot of the components and uh, assemble hard drives are underwater in Thailand, and production is virtually come to a standstill. So... We're going to see a shortage of hard drives for a few months to come here, and the, as a result, the prices are going to go through the roof. Yeah. In fact, I looked up uh, when we were talking earlier about that two and a half inch uh, hybrid uh, momentous drive. Mm -hmm. I think I paid like seventy nine dollars for mine when I bought it. It's on Newegg now for one hundred and forty nine. All right, so double the price. Uh, yep. Yeah. Now we have to remember we were worried about memory prices when the tsunami hit Japan, and yep. those have just hit the bottom right yep. now. Right. And so, um, I, maybe these will be short term. You think at three to three to six months, maybe? Uh, it's spice, possible. Spice. The only the only difference between that is when you look at a hard drive compared to a memory chip, um, you got a lot of moving parts in a hard drive. Yeah. You know, you got servos, motors, arms, armatures, magnets platters, coatings, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, true. Whereas, whereas in a, you know, in a, a memory chip, you basically are on one production line. They so. just stamp those out. Right. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Well, anyway, so maybe not a great time to buy hard drives. Hopefully you full faux shade it and, uh, and stocked <laughs> up when they were cheap. I love that term. That is just the best mm -hmm. thing. We credit Rich O'Neill for the, uh, for the, uh, the, uh, the, the, ori faux the origin. Yeah. The, the origination of the word of the, you, Gary, you know what we're talking about when we say the full faux shade? Not really. I figured so, it was an inside thing. Yeah, no, it well, <laughs> among the among the podcasts, uh, so Mike Fauche over at uh, BYOB, the Build Your Own okay. Box uh, on the Home Server Show Network, um, he is a guy that will buy. Uh, he doesn't, when he's testing something, he doesn't just buy one of anything. He buys no. three or four Absolutely. at a time, right? So when he was testing microphones, he bought three different kinds of microphones all at the same time, not one at a time to test them. He bought them all at once. And then if you'll, so I'll talk to him and I'll say, so what do you think of your mic? And you're like, well, I like this and I like that and I like this, but I got this other one and he just reaches over and pulls it in to the, to the discussion. And he's, and he's talking about, he still got it. It's uh yeah, I didn't like this. It's just sitting over here. And then he'll say, but I tried this one and he'll grab another one and pull it over. The, <laughs> the guy's just got tons of equipment. So <laughs> kind of like me with headphones. <laughs> if you go, yeah. There if you, you go. go if you go to the Urban <laughs> Dictionary and type in and look for the full Fauche, F O S H A Y with a dash F O dash S H A Y, um, uh, Rich got that uh, submitted and approved out at the Urban <laughs> Dictionary. And it's anytime you do something all the way with extreme quality, right? If you buy full out, yeah, full out. So if uh, if you're gonna buy one hard drive, you buy three. Or balls you, to the wall. That's it. The whole it, and of it course, can't. Do you do you understand the derivation of balls to the wall? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know it, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. We use it down here as well. <laughs> yeah, but do you understand its origin? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, Gary. What is is it? Uh, is it clean enough for this show? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, at what the is turn it? Of, at the turn of the century, most elect most electricity was produced by steam generators. Okay, and coal-fired plants, they'd boil it, would use coal to fire up a boiler. The sure. boiler would generate steam. The steam would run a generator. Well, generators, you want to run at a constant speed, so they had to have a method of governing the speed of the generator. So the mechanism is you have a governor, which is a shaft that spins on the vertical axis, and at the top are two big levers, and at the end of each lever, there's a huge ball. And the faster that generator spins, the higher those balls rise due to centrifugal force. And when uh -huh. they get to the top, they close, they, they limit the steam valve coming in so that the generator yep. can't go any faster. So when the generator comes to full speed, it's balls, balls to the walls. Balls to the walls. Oh, uh -huh. very nice. I did not know that. <laughs> 
Very you can, good. You can thank Jay Leno for that explanation. <laughs> he, collects, he collects antique steam generators. Really? Yeah. Um, uh, among other things. Uh, Andrew just threw the uh, Urban Dictionary uh, link. Make sure that makes it in the show notes as well, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in there for the full fauché. So uh, very cool. Anyways, and Mike has been a good sport about that as we have brought. That's It's our goal to get that into the tech vernacular anytime you're doing something all the way. You say, yeah, I did the full fauché. So <laughs> very good. All right. Yes, I brought it up. Okay, let's do one more. We've been on a while. This time has flown by, and I've uh, we're going to go a little late here. But uh, the ASUS Transformer Two, and you, you have now you're now calling that the Pad Phone. Uh, well, they they've been dropping little hints. Uh, there's been some video clips put out into the wild. Um, the w first one is the successor to the a ASUS Transformer, which should be out before the end of the year. It's the Transformer Two. It will be the uh, it's going to be a quad core. CPU and the latest NVIDIA uh, graphics technology. So it's supposed to be quite a step up. And there's also a rumbling of a pad phone, which is going to be a tablet. And on the back, there's a little compartment you pop open where you can plug in a cell phone. I'm not sure what cell phone, uh, huh. you know, what it's going to be required, but the cell phone will be the processing power for the tablet. Like, like we've discussed over the sure over the last couple year? podcasts yeah yeah well well since, we've had you on yeah since yeah yeah i mean we've been talking about that being the direction that will the industry will probably consolidate towards as processing power gets more powerful in smaller spaces more than likely you'll have a phone that you drop into your tablet you drop in the atrix has already got the laptop configuration sure, uh, sure. in place and, and, and connectivity and maybe you'll sit down at your desktop and just put it into your keyboard and same thing you know your your 24 inch monitor and your keyboard are there and all the processing is being done by a phone that you just plug into your keyboard take it with you take your tablet plug it into your tablet etc so that that seems to be like it's on the horizon and that technology is moving rapidly yeah, I, we're gonna, just going to see more of that kind of stuff come out, right? I, yeah. I would think. Yeah, tethering. I mean, that kind of takes tethering to a new to a new level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Especially uh, as the new phones get more and more powerful. Yeah, and I th uh, like I say, I think the days of the classic voice cell phone, they're 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 going to go by the wayside, just like the landline. You know, it's a yeah. technology whose time has passed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, data is being transmitted gigabytes of data are being transmitted by this handheld device you might as well carry the voice traffic over the same data stream right. rather than splitting voice data video you know right. just put it all on the same package and here's the here's the one device here's your package that you need to pay for on a monthly basis yep. and it all does it all do you hear that sprint <laughs> They don't. They don't do that. You can't. I think it's what it's moving towards. Yeah, I, no, you know, I agree with you. As, agree as with the you. infrastructure, yeah, the limiting factor I think right now, besides the device technology, which seems to be moving at a good clip, is getting the bandwidth infrastructure and the wireless uh, carriers built out to where it can handle right. the load. Yeah, right on. And that uh, wireless carriers have already recouped their investment in the voice lines. So. Yep. You know, oh, yeah. How many times over? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I think we're moving that direction as well. Hey, one more thing. I saw this in, in, uh, in the notes, Gary. 18 terabyte hard drives made possible using ordinary table salt? Well, it's just uh, yeah. <laughs> ba basically, yeah, um, a scientist has recently figured out how to increase the density of the platter by adding sodium chloride to the uh, the mix that puts the platters together. So... Um, they're talking about 18 terabyte hard drives. I put a link there in the show notes. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no, very yeah, cool. they, the electron microscopy shows like, uh, going down from 20 nanometers per, per bit location to 15 nanometers, which takes three terabytes up to 18. So, and TDK, TDK has some, uh, uh, HAMR. Uh, head technology, which is supposed to uh, do some uh, 
bringing out, they're talking about six terabytes in the near future and 18 terabytes on the horizon. So yeah. That's good news. Yeah, and no, a very good news that uh, they're thinking about that because we're we seem to be you know right now three three terabytes seems to be a pretty reasonable limit for the most part. Uh, four, I know there's some four coming. Yeah, there's but, fours out there in the externals just yeah. like they were when the first threes came out. So right, it's, right, it's coming. Yeah, it's on its way. All right, guys, I've got some uh, audio at the front of the show as we were waiting for Andrew to show. Andrew, anything else you want to add this evening? We'll uh, we'll get ready to wrap this up. We got a monster. I've got an hour and forty five minutes of of show to to produce here at the end. Anything else? No, no. I'm just uh, hope everyone in Australia has a long weekend, and if they're going to bet on the cup, back a winner. <laughs> now, what is this cup? What's what's the what is this? Okay, so the Mel the Melbourne Cup is. Um, probably one of the oldest standing horse races in, um, right. in Australia. So. Okay. so it's like the Kentucky Derby. It's like yeah. our Kentucky Derby. Okay, very yeah. cool. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, that's a, you know, that has lost a, a little bit of luster here in the United States. That used to be a pretty big deal. And uh, I don't I don't know if it if it uh, gets that much traffic anymore from, from a, but it's a big, still a pretty big deal there. Lots of, lots of folks show up. Um, yeah, look, my 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 current client um, is one of the leading um, industry or the, the industry leaders for gambling and wagering in in Australia. So, for them, it's a big deal. Okay. Yeah, it's probably it's probably their biggest um, their biggest uh, punting day in in the year. Okay. Very cool. Well, thanks for uh, Andrew. Thanks for taking a second and uh, join us on your Friday lunchtime to uh, be be to be a part of the show and. Uh, All good. Thanks, uh, being, thanks for coming love, out. Love, love being on board. It's good. Yeah, no, it's always good to have you. Hey, with the holiday uh, show notes still going to work for you this weekend? We get the show out yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah, cool. Very cool. And, uh, Gary, thanks for uh, – you're always a great replacement for Christian. We do miss him, but uh, you you do a great job of filling in. Thanks for being on the show tonight. Pleasure to be here. It's great to have you. I'll remind folks uh, as well, I'm going to have some content on the end of this. So you're going to hear music in a few seconds here. And uh, stay through the music. And then uh, Mike Howard joined us before the show, and we're going to play that after the show for you and uh, talk a little bit about his Windows Home Server issues that he's having. If you don't know what a Windows Home Server is, uh, just Google that. You should by now. Most of your listeners came over from there. If you don't, uh, Google that in and, and get familiar with it. Some good discussion about the latest version that uh, he's struggling with a little bit, as well as some build um, uh, he's got some new parts for a build, and then we kind of brought that in on the beginning of the show. So sorry to mix that up for you, but that's the way we will do it. I'll let you know we also are I have a new iTunes feed, so if you head out to, to iTunes and just search for The Average Guy Podcast, you'll find us, and you can subscribe to both the financial tech, the fitness tech, although I haven't done a fitness tech in a while, and home tech out there. We have a new financial tech. If you're listening to that, it's Andrew and I have been on a little hiatus for about five weeks not, and not you, Andrew. Andrew Hunt over at uh, Gallup Federal Credit Union uh, will join me tomorrow. We'll actually record one in the studio and then have that produced uh, over the weekend, probably come out sometime after this podcast has. Pop over and give that a listen. Surprisingly, we had uh, the last version of that, nine. We recorded that five weeks ago. Okay, so oh, it's, been, it's been out a while. Give and, me a yeah. Give me a call, Jim, for the financial tech. Oh. I just got finished reading All the Devils Are Here, and I've been oh. studying the – Mortgage crash for like three years now. Okay. So <laughs> I know where all the bodies are buried. Maybe Gary will have do a, so much fun, Gary. Maybe you and oh, me will have do. to do a special edition of that. Uh, when I do it in studio, it's really hard to add the Skype in. The, uh, the, the New York wealth uh, extraction machine. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, maybe we'll have to do a special edition, you and me, and uh, we'll we'll grind that out of you. Um, so you can find us also on Facebook. Just search for The Average Guy Podcast. Of course, if you go out to theaverageguy.tv, we have all the links necessary to automatically download this podcast. And uh, if you got a few minutes, head out to iTunes and leave a comment on the show. That helps us out a little bit, moves things up, and, uh, and, and maybe get some new viewers and some new listeners. That's always good for the podcast. This will wrap it up for the Home Tech Podcast, and we'll be back here next Thursday. It's not Thanksgiving yet, right? No, no. We'll be back here next Thursday. I keep thinking Thanksgiving is just like a week away. The time has been going so fast. Next Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern with all the guys back, and hopefully we'll get Chris Lux. Uh, maybe we'll reschedule him for another time. Chris, sorry we missed you here on the Home Tech Podcast. Good night. Have a good one. Good night. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. Good, oh, good, good work. You're always welcome. Yeah, you know, tonight was, uh, this is the most fun I've had on the home tech in a while. 
Good. Yeah. It's because was... Gary's on the board. Gary is Gary. You're a you're a podcasting extraordinaire. <sighs> you're like our secret weapon. Well, you yeah. know what I I I you know I know that I can with with Christian's schedule as as hectic as it is this year. I yeah. mean, he's really taken like some major AP classes and music and everything else he's got going that i told him i said look you know you need me to stand and just say so so even yeah. if he hasn't said anything i keep a notepad on my desk that's just for the podcasts and when i'm surfing during the week and i come across different things i just jot stuff down and uh, no. basically get ready to flesh it out so that when I get on the podcast, I don't go, uh, uh, yeah. no, you're good. Well, well, I think I, you know, <laughs> work up some notes, uh, work up a few notes for this, for this, this book that you read. And, uh, oh, let's, let's, fabulous. let's get something scheduled in a couple of weeks and we'll, and we'll, um, we'll just sit down for an hour or so. That's that show typically is 30 minutes, but that, it sounds like we might need 45 or an hour to get through the material. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, I, my two best reads this year have been uh, The Road to Serfdom by F.A. Hayek, written in 1944, which is an expose of socialism and Nazism in both Germany and Britain before, during, and after World War II. And his conclusion is, is that government, as it gets bigger, the private sector shrinks, and you move towards what he calls planning rather than free market and that it's that it's the upper end planning that shrinks the free market and leads the state towards totalitarian it, it inevitably ends in totalitarianism which destroys the economy right and and like you just sit and look at what's happening in this country today and you just go you know this guy nailed it 50, 60, 70 years ago, he, he knew what it was all about, and he fled Germany uh, and went to England during World War II and was a professor of economics there, and uh, just a brilliant read. Yeah, yeah it'd, be, then, it'd be interesting. And then uh, All the Devils Are Here is written by two investigative reporters that really unravel the history and the detail of the, uh, the whole mortgage industry. From wow. back in the early '80s to today, yeah, what a crime that was! And it still oh, is. I know. And, it's, and now we've got a president who's trying to sell the same can of bullshit to the students. <laughs> oh, I got this new student loan program for you, and 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 you know the 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 overriding fact that's obvious is if you look at the last 60 to 70 years of history in the United States, right? We created during the 60s the Department of Energy, the Department of Education, Housing and Urban Development, yada, yada, yada. Well, what's happened with energy? <laughs> Prices have gone through the roof. What's happening with housing? <laughs> massive corruption and massive inflation. Department of Education, the only area of the economy with a higher inflation rate consistently than the medical profession and when did that start when the department of Indi education sponsored student loan programs yeah sounds and, like you you don't think that politicians have the the, the electorate's interests at heart gary well the, <laughs> the 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 unmistakable revelation of anyone who studies this and and really looks at the history of it is that the, the financial community and the political community have yeah. designed a wealth extraction machine which, oh, I have. which raises prices, which forces people to borrow money so that they can afford what they're buying, and yep. they take all the profits out of the artificial price inflation that's generated mm. by the credit that's used to inflate the prices. Now save some and, for the show, Gary. Save some and, for the and, show. And then the brilliant part <laughs> is, is that they hedge the risk on both the principal and the interest and the rate. Interest. Yeah. And they profit when both collapse. And and they pick our eye teeth clean and we just sit here and we take it. Just incredible. Just incredible. 
Yeah, I think the I think the issue you guys have got too is it's hit your it's hitting you guys a lot harder than other other parts of the world too because of you know, I guess your popular, so, you, your popular we're so over it's, leveraged. Every every yeah. consumer is over leveraged, and our government is fifteen trillion dollars in debt. How do you deleverage? Yeah probably $25 trillion worth of debt, not including the unfunded liabilities out into the future. Yeah, so exactly. we're, you know, we're, everybody's sitting here going, oh, if we don't do something, we're going to be like Greece. I'm here to tell you, those, it's long past that point. They're yeah, talking yeah. about balancing the budget in, in the year 2020. I'm sitting here going, my God, why don't you balance the budget tomorrow? Why don't you why don't you see if you can break even next month? Why don't you see if you can figure out how to spend less next quarter than you take in in revenue? What do you mm -hmm. mean? You are like trying to figure out how to do it in 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 8 to 10 years? That's like you and I sitting here saying, "Oh yeah, you know, I know I'm $80,000 in debt and I got a mortgage of $250,000, but you know, yeah, maybe in 30 years I'll break even. And I just keep going backwards month after month. How can anybody live yeah. that way? Well, you wouldn't if you were if it, your own money, would you? Did you uh, did you hear what Warren, well, I don't know if this is recent, but Warren Buffett said, uh, he goes, I could fix the economy in five minutes. <laughs> he said, I love it. He's like, yep, I could fix it in five minutes. And uh, then any and you know the guy, he you know he struggles with the way the U.S. government works, because <clears throat> that's not how he would run the U.S. government. Right. And and I believe him. I mean, I think he's got a fairly solid plan. It'll never it would it could never get through the melee of mafia that we have here in the United States. But right, it uh, that's the problem. Yeah. Well, our, this is our, the home. Our mafia, our mafia have done done themselves a favor they've killed themselves <laughs> they're they've uh, eliminated themselves yeah. yeah yeah i mean we had we had a huge huge underworld problem in melbourne and basically the victorian police set up a task force to investigate them and when they started bumping each other off the cops just went back and went clear yeah <laughs> <laughs> let them go okay. for it <laughs> Gents, I've uh, I've been podcasting all week, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call this this one a night. And uh, Andrew, I'm gonna mix up the audio real quick here, uh, get everything spliced, and uh, and drop that out for you to take a. Oh, Chris Lux just woke up. <laughs> Fail. Shoot, we'll have to uh, we'll have to I'll have to get with him and reschedule. Um, I'm going to give him a quick ring here. So I'll let you guys go. Thanks, streamers. Yeah. And we'll catch, yeah, you. If, uh, we'll catch if, you. You know, I was on, so if you want to put him in my November 3rd slot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me, that's oh, fine. Perfect. I'll give, him, I'll give him a ring and let you guys know. So Very good, sir. Thanks, guys. Sweet.